Hello again. Welcome in. I'm so happy, so glad you came back. Um, did you have some hesitancy in coming back to do some therapy? Okay. Yeah. I totally get it. I really do. I mean, I've done therapy myself. Not a lot of therapists will admit that. Um, but I know how difficult it can be. Don't want to keep going. Yeah. Well, it all depends. On what you think and what you feel about it. Um, so, for example, if you, you know, genuinely feel that your needs have been met, if you genuinely feel like there's not much more, I mean, there's always more, but some need has been met for the time being, then I would say that, you know, maybe... You don't have to continue with therapy uh, in the meantime, and you can always come back and finish where you left off some other time. But again, not a lot of therapists would say that. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Well, let's finish where we left off there. Um, so, let's talk about your needs. So, one of the things that is clear across the board, easy to trace, is that with most people that either need to do therapy or want to do therapy, honestly, I think anyone and everyone could do with it. I mean, just a good conversation, not that people are inherently broken, but... A good conversation goes a long way. Um, I would say that these needs were um, usually not met in childhood. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so this is where it starts to get tricky because there aren't a lot of parents out there that really know how to parent because their parents didn't know how to parent. Instead, they just kind of wing it and we ought to be grateful to them because they bring, they brought us into the world, right? truth is, your needs still need to be met. And when they're not, you can live a life where your needs never get met. And, you know, it can be a sad life. It can be a happy life. But mostly it's a sad life. And that's a really hard reality to come to terms with, admitting that your life isn't what you want it to be, uh, that you're sad, for example. Don't get me wrong, okay? Everyone has something they're sad about. There is no way you can be on this planet and not have something that you're going through. Now have something painful that's happened, whether it be grief, whether it be trauma of some kind, there's always something that someone, everyone has gone through. The difference, and this is what I want to establish with you today, is between the people, the smaller minority, of people that are genuinely, say they're sitting over here, on this left camp, and they are genuinely grateful, uh, good people, and 
whether through deep healing work or just through the life that they lived, they're grateful to life, their upbringing, their parents. And then you have people over here on this camp, on the right hand side, and for your sake I want to narrow this down and say that over here is where you're sitting, potentially, because of your unmet needs that are larger than some of the needs that are that were needing to be met over here. The reason that these people over here are happy and that's the goal is because a lot of their needs were somehow met. Something came together good in a, in a good way for them in life. And it doesn't necessarily mean that this only comes through um, specific parameters like your parents. No, it can come through many, many things. So that's what we want to establish here. So you have yourself. Okay, let, let me put it another way, another metaphor. You have yourself and there's two parts to you. There is the part that needs to do the everyday work, the everyday stuff. And basically just gets on with it. Yeah? And then there's this other part that feels deeply and remembers everything and needs some compensation as to what happened in the past and so you're looking for that compensation in your everyday world and so you're walking around split because one part of you needs compensation and one part of you just needs to get the everyday stuff done and whether that compensation is met by your everyday stuff is very unlikely am I making sense? yeah this is where it starts to get tricky so, again, I commend you for starting therapy if I wanted to keep going because it's gonna, it's gonna get rough, alright? So, I know you're strong enough. <laughs> I can tell. Alright. So, over here on this camp, you're kind of more feeling into the past, right? You're not so much in your present moment, you're zoned out. And what this means is... You know, you're not maybe doing as well in your everyday world as you could have and you want to do better. But in order to do better, you need to salvage something. And that salvation, that salvage-ness, I want to say, um, the triumphant nature that you're wanting to feel and reach, it's going to be through you... Well, it's going to be through you. <laughs> and honestly, I wish there was, there was a simple road that we could all travel that was the same and it was easy. It's not. Alright, it's up to you and it's because of you that we, we need to delve deeper. You know, I could sit here and tell you all of the things that I've ever learned from therapy, from being a therapist, but that still wouldn't be enough because we have to look into you and you are a unique being. So going back to those needs that need to be met, usually when there's a quiet, sensitive person in the room, a lot of people who aren't that way will tend to notice the quiet, sensitive person. And unfortunately, because the quiet, sensitive person is very good at taking on energy, um, the trauma can build. So we have a lot of unwinding to do. But I want to ask you to think about what it is you love to do because when you find that perfect chemical balance of what it is that you love to do it can be anything at all uh, simple or complex that I can guarantee you is going to be where you find some of your healing antidote that is going to be where all of that trauma from the past 
is actually, was actually, a big piece of the puzzle toward your biggest superpower, which is usually the thing you love the most to do. Or is usually the thing that you are and love the most once we get there, once we get to you. <laughs> you right now, you know, has some walls and uh, bruises, right? Bandages, kind of thing. And we want to just uh, take those off very slowly, very carefully. Because you need to have time to adjust. I do recommend meditation for that reason. Because you can go slow and steady. And in these kinds of conversations, we don't end up feeling more hate, more anger toward ourselves or anyone else. Instead, this kind of trauma healing is to make you a stronger person. Because you are getting your needs met and a strong person gets their needs met. But doesn't do it in a rush. They know they've got time. You know you've got time to get your needs met. Okay? So you don't trample on other people to get them met because you know they're going to get met. It might not be in the timing that you wish, but you know that they're going to get met. And for that, that is worth living. But we have to be clear about what your needs are and where they didn't get met. Right. Honestly, I just want to tell you that your story feels completely new to me because of the pain that I can feel is coming through your experience. But it's also the similar, most similar of stories that I've heard. And I know that knowing other people have gone through this kind of thing doesn't actually make it better. Sometimes it makes it worse. Because you have your own unique experience and no one can ever know what that's like. But you're not alone. You're not. Um, <laughs> and I guarantee you that the more you open up toward your needs and what you truly want from life, it's, um, it's I guarantee pieces of the puzzle is coming, it's right there, it's right there. But we have to decode the puzzle and to do that, you have to pick up all the pieces of you that you discarded because you didn't think you were worth having your needs met. Okay, because as because of what you've shared, all right, that's a very key key story as to why people don't think their needs are important. They're physical, they're emotional, spiritual, intellectual needs. They're real. And it's part of the self-care journey here. You know, uh, the earth can only take care of you so far. Other people can only take care of you so far. You have to be your best carer. And a lot of people, <laughs> they live for other people. And we've created a system that's very heavily based on helping other people um, but it's not really helping so we have to help ourselves, right have to get those needs understood clear as day what what inspires you 
I don't know, like what lights you up. And honestly, it can be something that no one's ever said before, that you've never heard anyone say before. And it will be valid if that's what's coming up for you. Don't feel the need to hide it because you say it out loud and you do more than just meet your need on the inside, you meet it on the outside. Okay. Yeah, so you take that, that very thing you just shared with me, yeah, you take that and you build your life around it. Because it's what you need, it's what you want, and if that changes one day, so be it. But if you can stick to giving that to yourself on a weekly basis, you're going to be golden here, alright? Not to use metaphors that don't maybe make sense. That's kind of what metaphors do, but you know, sometimes there's not, there's not the words for the healing and for the the living of life that can be had when we're at peace. And, um, doesn't matter how you find that peace, it matters that you find it. Well, now that we've established your need, your, your thing that you can hold on to and say, this is what, this is what I'm going to allow for myself, this is a need, this is I'm going to fulfill my need, no one else can do it, this is what I need, I want you to watch. Listen to what thoughts come up. Listen, 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 listen. Because there, you're going to have all kinds of thoughts come up in the middle of you, trying to fulfill your needs. Okay? And it's a very unfortunate side effect of trauma. What I need you to promise, 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 promise that you're willing to listen and look at your thoughts and decide which ones to discard because there's going to be plenty of those, there's going to be plenty of thoughts to discard and there's going to be plenty can keep. Yeah. You keep them and you become friends with some of your thoughts and you get more friends, more good thoughts come your way and more good actions follow. We know how keeping bad thoughts goes, right? Usually it goes something like this. You feel depressed, you feel anxious, you feel lonely, you feel, just, you name it, yeah, because you're keeping thoughts that should have been discarded, but for whatever reason, you embodied them. So, when we're looking at the thoughts, as we're fulfilling our needs in whatever way, or shape, or form that comes about, or path that comes about, We're watching for the part of us that 
it's going to come up in a thought and it's going to show its ugly head sometimes and it's going to show its beautiful loving head sometimes okay you got a lot of different thoughts going to come your way you know that and all you have to do is practice listening lovingly listening okay you're not going to judge the thoughts and even when you do judge the thoughts you're going to not judge them by just realizing that either this is a thought that is of suffering or this is a thought of love and you make that distinction and you decide which ones to keep and which ones to let go of and that my friend is up to you completely that is your choice that is your free will what thoughts to keep and what thoughts to discard and you may wonder where some thoughts come from as we've discussed they usually have a pretty uh, similar background usually it's from childhood but also it can be from anything really that happened in your environment for example that happened recently um, so I know that it seems preposterous that all you have to do is just on the way to getting your needs met just keep the ones, keep the thoughts that you want to keep and discard the ones that you don't want to look at it's not actually that simple but it is that simple the part of it that's simple is that that is truly all you have to do and you don't need to worry about it the part of it that's not so simple is that some thoughts come along and you don't know whether to keep them or to discard them <laughs> that is where meditation can come in breathing can come in grounding, moving, exercising, things like that until you're ready to face that thought again and decide what you're going to do with it um, another part that's more complicated is that sometimes you may just think you've discarded a thought and nope, it comes back again so you don't let any repetitive thought throw you off your throne there, right? it's just it's going to happen probably until one day, pop, you never think about it again. Um, but working with thoughts, it's tricky business. But if you can master it, well then you've mastered all there is, really, to therapy. Yeah. It seems simple and complex, I know, I know. There's more. Um, yeah, I don't know, I guess this is just um, a calling for me to share this. Uh, helping other people makes me feel helped. To be of use, to be of help, is to feel helped. So... Mm-hmm. Well. I'm grateful. I'm grateful you came today. And, um, yeah. I'm excited to go on this journey. <laughs>